Hey kids, it's Food Friday. So today's lesson is on the history of sushi. Sushi first came into existence in Japan around the 8th century. It consisted of gutted, salted fish stored in fermented rice. You know, this half-rotting rice is good and all, but I can still smell things. Yeah, and I'm not having nearly as much diarrhea as I would like to be. What should we do? Raw fish. Raw fish, I was thinking exactly the same thing. God, we are so in sync. Nah, but actually, the rice wasn't meant to be eaten. It was only used as a means of preservation. You see, the fermenty juices of the rice would soak into the fish and prevent it from spoiling. However, as semi-rancid food often does, it would also impart a sour taste on the fish. That's where the name sushi comes from, an antiquated Japanese term for sour tasting. Also, it smelled like death. The odor is described as an extremely pungent cross between blue cheese, fish, and vinegar. Man, I'm mad. Why is that? I smelled something down the road, thought a new sushi vendor was in town. Turns out, it was just a hobo taking a piss on a tuna sandwich. Later on, during the late Edo period, people started pickling the rice, which drastically shortened the required fermentation time. So now, rather than smelling like blue cheese, fish, and vinegar, it just smelled like fish and vinegar. Go figure. People found this rice to be much more palatable, so it began to be eaten alongside the fish. Sheet seaweed was also invented around 1750, which allowed the contemporary sushi roll to take form around this time. Toss in a couple vegetables, and you've got something much more resembling to today's sushi. During the late 19th century, many Japanese emigrated to America to escape the imperial takeover of Japan, which was known as the Meiji Restoration. It just so happens that they brought the concept of sushi with them, which enjoyed brief popularity among the upper class during the turn of the 20th century. However, coinciding with the imperial takeover was the fact that Japan started being kind of a dick. Hey, freedom is gay. What did you just say? Yeah, your way of life is for pussies. Oh yeah? Guess we'll just stop eating your dumb fucking fish roll things then. Hey, fuck you, you cheeseburger slut. I'll nuke your bitch ass. Wait, what is nuke? 40 years, you'll see. And thus, sushi lost its place in the West. Cut to the early 1960s. World War II tensions are mostly gone, and refrigeration is everywhere. This allowed sushi to again rise in America, this time for good. By the 1980s, sushi restaurants were everywhere, especially along the West Coast. But as you can imagine, American sushi saw significant alteration in order to appeal more to the Western palate. For example, if you went to Japan and asked for cream cheese in your roll, they'd probably just put you on a raft and gently push you out to sea. But to each their own. And today, sushi is more popular than ever. So kids, remember to be careful of who you make fun of. Because the weird smelly kid of today might just be the next big thing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.